Hi there and welcome. Uh, I'm Patrick Lichty and uh, thanks for having me here at the Karachi Arts Summit. And um, I'd like to say a few words about my piece in the summit and online called Draw the Karachi Internet. And um, in starting, I'd like to say that uh, talking to you, even by video, here on YouTube, is the result of a really long, strange chain of events. Um, in many ways, as I'm as much a, a networked individual as a physical one. Um, I've been on the net since 1983, and I've got thousands of uh, friends across this global network. Um, one, someone you know, Yasir, and uh, we've more or less known uh, about or known each other since 2003 uh, when I started doing this um, online magazine with the uh, digital curator of the Whitney Museum of American Art, Christian Paul, called Intelligent Agent. I did that for about 10 years. Actually, it was 2002 to 2013. And that's how we met. Um, you know, however, you know, I, um, we started talking again a couple years ago when, when I moved to Sharjah, actually, when I was at American University of Sharjah. And um, about the possibility of uh, an art summit here, and um, when that started becoming a, a reality, um, Yasir and introduced me to your fantastic curator, uh, Meherin Hashmi, and um, we started this conversation that um, questioned this existential moment in, in network culture and who we are in the net, and even what you know this this internet thing is. So that's the reason why I thought that a relational post-internet intervention in Karachi in the spirit of Hans Ulrich Obrist's Do It project made a lot of sense to me. So this contemporary notion of post-internet, and I look at this term in this unhyphenated, lowercase sort of handle uh, that culture uses to describe a, a set of effects rather than a description in itself. I mean, one example is new media, um, something that describes practices around computational media and its production. I mean, net art is another good handle for that too, you know, to describe um, internet art-based um, interventions um, on the internet in the, in the 1990s. Another one is the, the new objectivity, the Neue Sackerkeit that happened in um, Germany in the 1920s. I mean, it's still called new, right? Um, and we can say this for new media, but I mean, are all these things new? Maybe in terms of, you know, relative to Gutenberg, yes, but, you know, really, these are terms that we grasp culture with. And, um, you know, a lot of people do this. Same happens with manner in which, uh, um, a lot of my colleagues, including uh, Marissa Olson, who is frequently ascribed for uh, having coined the term post-internet, you know, uses this sort of lowercase title for, um, you know, this cultural moment that we live in that exists after the rise of the internet as a, um, a, of a mass medium. But however, I think this particular term, as it relates to the genre of contemporary art, describes a culture that's perhaps after the rise of social media, blogging, and the like, rather than the invention of the World Wide Web in the early 90s, or the key innovations that the um, internet is based on 1972 as a way to maintain communications in the event of nuclear attack. So the way I make these distinctions is not fighting for one idea or another, but to describe certain points in time as they relate to culture. For example, you know, the notion of post-internet, for me, describes the period after the emergence of social media where the internet became, and I use kind of a Dubai term, uh, the mall of the world. It refers to a John Hughes-like mall rat sort of moment in the 1980s where kids, like me in the Midwest, would hang out at the mall. But now, you know, everybody hangs out at the mall. And maybe Facebook is kind of like the mall. And I live in the land of the mall. So to me, thinking about a somewhat 
youth-driven, mall-like environment in cyberspace resonates with me and bears a great metaphor for the world right now. And you know how we can frame a relational project in which we can think about it, like draw the Karachi internet. So this is why when I sent the first image to the group um, for draw the Karachi internet on Facebook, I used the image of the billboard that hailed Mark Zuckerberg for giving Pakistan free internet. I mean, for me, this was kind of weird because in the US and particularly Chicago where I'm from, Facebook is sort of free. I mean, except for the fact that we basically work for them when we're online and we generate their ad revenue. However, that being said, the fact that Facebook um, allows some Pakistani service providers to give free airtime strikes me kind of strange, but it isn't really any surprise. I mean, of course, handheld bandwidth is, is precious in various parts of the world, and in Southeast Asia, landlines are less common than cell towers. But on the other hand, you know, the free Facebook, to me, is um, another form of re-emergent colonialism. I mean, it comes from America, the land that basically made the foundations of the Internet. And this makes me think of how the Internet, once declared by John Perry Barlow as the, the free nation of mind, I mean cyberspace actually, has been subverted and subsumed by nation states, capital, military, uh, rogues, pirates, and etc. to reinscribe markets and um, traditional spheres of power throughout the world for their own purposes. Now let me be clear that I don't have any illusions that Barlow's utopia exists in, online anywhere except that in, in enclaves like the well, but like the mall. Uh, Facebook's a private space, and the American ideal of the First Amendment, um, you know, the United States Constitution, um, and its promise of free speech exists the same way as in a mall on Facebook. I mean, sure, you can have free speech, but it really kind of fits Facebook's uh, terms of service as well as its acceptable use policy. This is why the online virtual world Second Life, in my opinion, didn't become the th um, 3D web. I mean, in addition to being harder to use than a web browser, I mean a lot, um, and requires a pretty big computer and bandwidth to run, means that you probably have to come from a handful of pretty rich technological countries in order to go to the mall in the first place. And you know, let's not forget that Second Life was a commercial um, server company, and while the World Wide Web is a set of standards, um, you know, it's a, it's a set of standards, it's not a technology. And so, like the cultural guidelines for building mall, it isn't like going to Victoria's Secret. So, understanding that uh, the world mall doesn't exist everywhere, and that entry isn't the same for everybody, uh, and so many places have firewalls like China and Turkey, and um, it creates other practices. And some of us are making art out of that, like Dina Karadzic's uh, use of uh, single-chip computers to host galleries in the underground dark web, or Arne Bartel's uh, use of dead drops, online data repositories where you can get um, archives of information on USB stick, or even the Alexandria Project, uh, huge online databases of PDFs and electronic books. So. The point that I'm getting at here is that the internet is a largely American invention. You know, and social media after it, you know, re resonating with Olson's term meaning, you know, that we're in a period of culture that's after being immersed in an integrated internet, at the internet based sort of um, culture. So this has shaped global culture, redefined global spheres of influence, redefined the contemporary art world, and likewise redefined our channels of interpersonal relations. This is no more true than now that because as I'm talking to you from YouTube, which is owned by another one of these monopolistic stacks of the, of, of the um, electronic world, Google, the world index for um, internet information, you know, defined by their in algorithms, comes from America. So, um, 
I want to sort of question some of these things. So when I proposed Draw the Karachi Internet, I thought of Hans Ulrich Obrist's project begun in 1993 called Do It, which has been re-envisioned around the world, including last year at the uh, Sharjah Art Foundation, Do It in Arabic. Um, so these are very sparse, open, flux-like scores of in, in instructions, uh, similar to those in the 1960s. These sets of instructions invite a relational conversation between the initiator, artist, and the audience in regards to how the art as an interpersonal interaction takes shape. So with Draw the Karachi Internet, um, you know, I'm appearing to you across this network, this place, this set of institutional practices, mall, whatever you want to call it. I'm asking you to imagine with me what cyberspace, the internet, even Facebook would be if it originated in Karachi. I mean, on site. Uh, it's a net. It's a sort of network diagram that I have a lot of debts to my friend Barack Arakan for, uh, but it's filled with kind of like post-internet stuff, like cats, memes, Wikipedia. I mean, what would Wikipedia look like if the base language was Urdu, right? But um, online, it's conversations. We're going to make it into a book. It's going to be this YouTube video and uh, a lot of other fa artifacts of any numbers of chunks of data zipping around the internet. Um, so what we have here is a conversation as artwork that doesn't only inhabit Karachi, but the world, or at least large chunks of it. So what I'm wondering about here is what would the net look like if it were invented in Pakistan? You know, would we have Google? Would Facebook be green? Um, would we have cat memes? Well, I mean, come on, really. We, we would. I mean, let's get real, okay? But as such, this um, intervention really kind of became larger than myself by a few billion people at the moment we started it. And, um, you know, I'm asking you to be part of that too. And actually, to tell you the truth, we are. Um, I'm just making it more visible. So while the installation of Draw is one conversation, um, the conversation about the internet as existential condition um, takes part every day around the world without us thinking about it and draw the Karachi internet is my wish to make these institutions and practices that we more and less live with simultaneously as you know alongside our uh, everyday lives more visible so for me um, you know every day in the web is a real education and this project has been no different you know I mean although I'm offering our Facebook group as a record of the online part of this conversation. And I hope you'll be part of it uh, in Karachi and also online. So, I ask you, what would the internet be like if you invented it? I mean, this is what I want to talk about. So I hope you'll jo join me. Uh, thanks to Marine and uh, Yasir for having me. And... Um, I hope this conversation is fantastic, useful, and um, let's draw the crotchy internet. Thanks.